Hello guys, I just want to show you here a nice case and this is an example of a wrist MRI with arthrography as you can see here. But let me just go through uh, some, uh, basically the main finding here, which I think is really nice uh, here. So normally like one of the frequent questions people have for MRI of the wrist is TFCC and we can see, uh, we just want to focus on the TFCC here. So we can see the discus and you know, there is the insertion and then we go here, we see the radio ulnar ligament, and then we see the volar radio ulnar ligament, we can start to see the molar ulnar carpal ligaments, so that's all good. So discus itself is fine, but what about the insertion here? So we have the steroid process here, and normally we have one insertion here and one insertion down to the fovea, and here we can see a lot of fluid here, it's kind of like dissecting up here. Basically the lateral or the ulnar bits here of the TFCC is always surrounded with fluid and I don't see anything properly going here. Just the meniscus homolog here, which is not super important, but it never, nothing really goes ever there. And we can then also see this is a PD. It's unfortunately not a T1. So for some reason um, in this arthrography protocol, they don't do coronal T1, which would be even more um, nicer. So we can see here, tack, tack, Nothing really goes there and even nothing really inserts down here. And we we have this ligamentum sucrentum here and you know you, you can't see a nice striation and nothing. And then when we go to the axials, I think this is a nice example here too. Normally what you have on an axial, we can see the discus, which is normal, but then you normally see a straight line from the foveal attachment to the tip of the steroid process. So if you go on an axle like this, there should be somewhere a connection. It can be obliquely, depends a little bit on the pronation or supination you're in, but here nothing goes in there. So this is a full tear of the foveal and steroid attachment, post-traumatic situation. And to confirm this, well, not to confirm this, we can actually easily see this also here. If we go on the orthography here, this was done before the MRI, obviously. So this was the injection into the distal radio ulnar joint. And it's quite a, a shame that in this particular case, the you can see the, what's it called, like the, the pipe here, where contrast is in, just goes over the actual findings. So we just go to the next image. So first injection here, and then injection in the mid carpal compartment. This is quite like the Swiss standard approach. And you can see contrast in here, but then contrast goes here where it should not go up. So this is not normal. And so this is a communication here through the peripheral tear of the foveal and steroidal attachment. So first the foveal attachment, and then you can have contrast here, then steroidal attachment, second, and then contrast goes into the ulnocarpal compartment. And we can also verify this. This is the T1. We see contrast in the distal radial ulnar joint, but you can also see contrast in the ulnocarpal or radiocarpal compartment, which basically confirms the communication between either this or this compartment. But since we don't see any other you know, leakage into the radiocarpal compartment. This is the, where the contrast went through, kind of like diff, you know, confirming a full thickness there here, allowing this contrast to go through. So this is a really nice case. And if you really want to take your wrist MRI to the next level, then as you might or might not know, I have a wrist MRI masterclass where you can start to become very good and confident that in these kind of things. So it's also a part of the fellowship program, but if you just want to focus on risk, then I think it's a good starting point. And yeah, so I just wanted to show you this here. Okay.